Hello and welcome to a discussion on how to determine the cost of using long-term assets. The cost of using long-term assets is called depreciation expense or amortization expense. After viewing this video, you should be able to compute depreciation expense using the straight line method, the double declining balance method, the sum of the year's digits method, and the units of production method. You should also be able to determine the gain or loss on sale and compute partial year depreciation expense. Cash paid for goods and services are either reported as an asset on the balance sheet, called capitalized, or reported as an expense on the income statement. An asset has probable future economic benefit and an expense is recorded when there is no probable future economic benefit. Assets lose probable future economic benefit when they are used and the value used is reported on the income statement in the period the asset is used. All assets are either collected in cash, sold for cash, or used to produce revenues. An expense is recorded when the asset is used to produce revenues in accordance with the matching principle. The actual cost of using long-term assets during each period is not known and the accountant must estimate the portion of the total cost of the asset that is used in each period. The cost of using long-term assets must be allocated to the time period the asset is used to produce revenues. Take a moment and review the useful lives of the items reported as property, plant, and equipment. Notice that the years are within a range. The useful life of a particular company for each type of asset is based on the accountant's judgment. Now take a moment and review the common useful lives associated with intangible assets. It is the accountant's responsibility to estimate the cost of using long-term assets for each period of time reported on the income statement. The residual value, also called salvage value, is the estimated amount expected to be received when the company sells the asset at the end of use. Depreciable cost is a total net cost to the company and this must be expensed over the time the asset is used. It is the cost of the asset less the estimated residual value. The useful life is the amount of years the company expects to use the asset. Useful life is estimated based on past experience with similar assets. Useful life is not the amount of years the asset is expected to last. Accumulated depreciation is the total depreciation expense for all periods the asset has been used. It is the total depreciation expense for all prior periods plus the current period. Book value is the cost of the asset less accumulated depreciation or amortization. Book value represents the amount that will be expensed in future periods. Book value does not represent fair market value. Take a moment and review the terms. Property plant equipment is reported on the balance sheet net of the expense of using the asset so far to date. The asset is reported at historical cost and accumulated depreciation is subtracted from the cost to get the book value or net amount that will be expensed in future periods. This is not equal to fair market value or net worth. A company must allocate the cost of using long-term assets to each period the asset is used to produce revenues. GAAP requires the amount to be systematically and rationally allocated. Over time, accountants have developed four methods that are commonly used to estimate the expense for each period. We will discuss the use of each of these four methods. The most commonly used method is the straight line method. This method allocates an equal amount of expense to each period the asset is used. The annual expense is computed as cost less residual value divided by the estimated useful life in years. This is the most commonly used method because the calculation is very simple and many assets are assumed to produce revenue equally over time. Thus an equal expense is matched to the equal revenues. The next method is referred to as double declining balance. 
Double declining balance results in a higher expense in the first year and a lower expense in each subsequent year. This method is most commonly used for assets that have significant maintenance cost. Depreciation expense decreases and maintenance expense increases as the asset ages. The two expenses combine to give a fairly constant expense of using the asset each year revenue is produced. The annual depreciation expense for double declining balance is computed as 100% divided by the estimated useful life times 2, which is the double, to get the percent that is multiplied by the book value. The book value decreases as accumulated depreciation increases over time. The lower book value in future years results in lower depreciation expense in future years. The units of production method estimates and uses an average cost of producing one unit based on the total units the asset is expected to produce. The annual expense is computed as cost less residual value divided by the total estimated units to be produced. The estimated average expense per unit is multiplied by the units produced to get the depreciation expense for the period. This method is used for machines and natural resources when it is relatively easy to reliably quantify estimated total output. The depreciation expense is a direct match to revenue generated during the period. The sum of the year's digit method accelerates depreciation expense in the first years in a rational manner. Depreciable base is multiplied by a declining fraction each year. The denominator is always the sum of the estimated useful life numbers. The numerator begins with the useful life and decreases by 1 for each subsequent year. Here's a quick example of the sum of the years digit method. Notice that the asset has a useful life of 4 years and you start with 4 and work down adding all the numbers together. Then the cost less residual value is multiplied by the highest number first over the total. Each subsequent year uses the next lowest number down. Let's work through an example and compute depreciation expense using the four different methods. Take a moment and note the facts in the example. Depreciation expense using the straight line method divides the depreciable base or the cost less residual value by the useful life to get the depreciation expense that is going to be the same for each year. Now let's look at the same example using the double declining balance method. Notice the formula. 100% divided by the useful life gives the percent that is doubled to get the percent that is multiplied by book value. Applying this formula gives a depreciation expense of $65,000 for year 1. The expense in year 1 becomes accumulated depreciation and is subtracted to get to book value in year 2. Each year's depreciation expense is added to accumulated depreciation, which keeps increasing and decreases book value. As book value decreases, the depreciation expense decreases for each year. The next method is units of production. The formula is used to compute the estimated cost per unit. The estimated cost per unit multiplied by the units produced in each period equals the depreciation expense for each period. The amount of depreciation expense varies directly with the quantity of units produced. The last method is the sum of the year's digits. Notice the formula that was previously discussed. The cost less residual value, or the depreciable base, is multiplied by the fraction related to each year. The fraction decreases with each year the asset is used. Over the 8 year, the fractions will add up to 36 over 36 and 100% of the depreciable base will be expensed.
Now let's take a moment to compare the depreciation expense for each year using the four most commonly used methods. Note a straight line gives an equal amount each year. Double declining balance and some of the year's digits start high and decrease each year. Units of production varies with the actual quantity produced. Now let's look at how the different methods affect operating income reported on the income statement of a company with $500,000 in sales and $400,000 of other operating expenses. Notice that the method used to estimate depreciation expense has a significant impact on the amount of operating income reported. A lower estimated depreciation expense gives a higher income. The impact in the first year is different than the impact in the third year or later years. Notice that a company with the same asset can report different operating income if they use different depreciation methods. An asset can have a different useful life than originally estimated. When this happens, the estimated book value will not be equal to the cash received when the asset is sold. A gain or loss is recognized for the difference in the cash received and the book value when the asset is sold. The estimated depreciation expense for all periods used up to the date of the sale determines the amount of the gain or loss. A lowered estimated depreciation expense each period will likely result in a loss, while a higher depreciation expense each period is more likely to result in a gain. Let's take a look at an example of an asset that is sold to illustrate the impact of an incorrect estimate on the gain or loss reported on the sale. This machine was purchased at a cost of $260,000. The company expected to use the new machine for eight years and sell it for $25,000, and the machine was actually used for only three years and sold for $150,000. The first step is to compute the accumulated depreciation after the end of three years. Total accumulated depreciation varies based on which method is used. The cumulative depreciation expense determines the book value at the time of the sale. The book value at the time of the sale then determines the gain or loss. The higher the depreciation expense, the lower the book value and the higher the gain. The lower the depreciation expense, the higher the book value, and the higher the loss. The name of the expense reported on the income statement indicates the type of asset that was used. The income statement reports only the expense for one period of time. Historical costs, less the total expense of using the asset to date, or the accumulated amount, is reported on the balance sheet as the net cost or book value. The cost of using property plant and equipment is reported as depreciation expense. The cost of using intangible assets is reported as amortization expense. The cost of using natural resources is reported as cost of goods sold or depletion expense. Accountants record the expense of using long-term assets as an adjusting entry at the end of each period before financial statements are prepared. The expense related to the asset is increased and the amount is added to the contra-asset account or subtracted from the intangible asset or natural resource. Long-term assets purchased in the middle of the year must be expensed for the part of the year the asset was used. Let's look at an example of how to determine depreciation expense when the asset is purchased during the middle of the year. The first step is to compute the amount for the full year. Then you, the use of the automobile for four months from September 1st through December 31st must be expensed in the year the automobile was purchased. The asset was used for four months, so the expense is the full year amount 
of 3,333 multiplied by 4 months out of 12 months, the part of the year the asset was used. The estimated cost of using the asset for 4 months of the year is 1,111. Each year after that, we'll report a full year of depreciation expense until the last year the asset is used for the other 8 months. In the last year, 8 months of depreciation expense will be recorded. The total accumulated depreciation expense over the full 8 years of use will be 20000 the depreciable base. The same approach is used when using the double declining balance method or any other method of assets purchased during the year. Compute a full year of depreciation and multiply the annual expense by the number of months over 12 the asset was used during the year. The depreciation expense is subtracted from the historical cost to get book value that is then multiplied by the percent to get the next year's depreciation expense. The pattern continues until the total depreciation expense for all years reaches the depreciable base of 20000 After viewing this video, you should be able to compute depreciation expense using the four methods, straight line, double declining balance, sum of the year's digits, and units of productions. You should be able to de determine the gain or loss on sale and compute the partial year depreciation expense. Please go to studymyaccounting.com and work through practices you learn for examples of how to compute depreciation. Then work the practice test. Please write out your answers and check your understanding to the answers provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.